and Nike Air Force Ones, which have garnered a bit of attention. I think they're pretty much sold out on the online store at the moment. Now, I, unlike most people, are going to say that these are an excellent idea, and I think that they're probably one of the best kind of Nike interpretation or Nike collaborations that Supreme have put together so far, very much on the money. Um, again, uh, Supreme have a very um, interesting uh, history when it comes to Nike collaborations, right? Some of them miss, some of, some of them are hits, some of them are misses. But what I do like about Supreme is that they never choose the easy option. They always kind of choose really um, difficult silhouettes, or silhouettes that are very much tied or are very much ingrained in New York streetwear culture. And if you're not a part of it, you wouldn't really get it. And the fact that Supreme is a global brand, from the set that kind of a big risk, is something that should be uh, commended, right? Something that should be applauded. But I also do think that when they do hit the collaborations, they have a really good way of um, representing, or they have a really good way of choosing shoes that represent Supreme on the, glo on the macro level, on a micro and a macro level, right? On a global and a local level. And I think the Air Force One is one of those monarchies. Because I think if you've ever been to New York, if you know anything about New York streetwear culture or New York um, culture in general when it comes to sneakers, you know the Air Force One is the quintessential um, New York shoe, right? It was kind of dubbed, I think, back in the day. It was called the Uptowns. They had a, yeah, right? Um, or the, yeah, is it called the Uptowns? I'm pretty sure it's the Uptowns. They had a nickname for the Air Force One. Um, obviously, you hear people like ASAP Rocky talking about uh, the need for people to not wear mids. Mids have a bit of a weird relationship with people in New York. They sometimes are very much uh, strict about only wearing highs and lows. The fact that lows, especially black lows, are very much linked to uh, high crime. I remember at the time there was a period, I think in the UK too, there was a period in time where the Air Force One All Black was one of the prominent shoes that was getting... Um, put into evidence when it came to like house robberies and shit so i remember there being a list of shoes i think air max 95s are on there air force ones are on there too just the kind of the quintessential kind of comfortable shoe that you could kind of get up into someone's house and take all their shit and obviously on the other side you've got the air force one in white uh or the all white air force ones right um where they're essentially probably one of the only probably one of the most copied shoe silhouettes that's ever existed Every kind of high fashion brand has tried to kind of take that shoe and kind of take the DNA of it and apply it to their own silhouettes. Not to good effect. Maybe anyone I've seen so far is Phoebe Filo's iterations of the Air Force One mid in leather. That was pretty cool. But for the most part, the Air Force One white is basically seen as the kind of quintessential um, uh, kind of like, um, what do you call it? Uh, you know, you're kind of dressing up and dressing down like you can dress it up and dress it down really easily a pair of jeans all of a sudden it turns into a regular shoe uh you throw in a pair of uh, crisp uh suit trousers you know some isi miyaki pants isi miyaki blazer and a pair of fresh white air forces and suddenly now the air force one's been elevated and i think that's the real beauty of it so for supreme to decide to collaborate with with nike on an air force one in both a white low and a black low and then have it be something that kind of is going to be restocked frequently throughout the season similar to what they do with the Hanes t-shirts and the uh, boxer pants that come in all the time right i think this is pretty cool it, it just kind of makes it so that there is a base uh level essentials as supreme whether it comes from the backpacks that are usually the same sort of shapes or the messenger bags or whether it comes to the t-shirts and the undergarments and the boxes and the socks are maybe coming up soon i really like the idea i think it's really fresh and again very tastefully done now the only thing i would have done differently if it was me is that I would have purposely edit, made them a bit more custom. I think at the moment, the only custom thing we have is the debossed logo on the side, uh, on the side of the heel in black. And, and I think that's a good thing as well because what you've got, because it's a black and a white upper, you have the benefit of them using the logos that are pretty much more recognizable. The, the red and white, as opposed to the other kind of colorways that people don't really maybe spot from afar so that's pretty cool but if it was if it was if i was part of the process i would have maybe uh, opted for them to kind of maybe lux up the upper materials which might have impeded the fact that they can't make as many and they can't probably price them as cheap as they are now i think they're like 90 bucks or something so maybe i would have upgraded the leather and made them a bit more lux a bit more um durable maybe a bit more premium that would have made it better but i think overall as a design or as an idea and as an execution i think they're absolutely beautiful um again uh, clean all white air force ones no nonsense no and this is no unnecessary um um you know accruements on the eyelets no crazy insoles no dumb sort of like heel tab thing just clean white air force ones that i'm a big fan of and again you've got the addition if you want to go loud you've got the kind of uh, quintessential supreme branded uh red laces with the white text 
But so far, and again, you know, the first thing I'm going to do is take off that lace jewel and just wrap them up really, really nice. I'm not sure if the lace jewel has some sort of... Does the lace jewel have any any signature, any signage on it? Is there some sort of, like, supreme thing on the lace jewel or is it just a standard a AF1 thing? I'm not too sure. I can't really see on that picture. But, again, I'm a big fan of it. Um, Eve says in the news, Supreme has worked with Nike on a custom version of the Air Force One. Can you really say it's custom when it's always got a debossing on it? I don't know, and an insole? Maybe you can. You probably can. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Now, exclusively for Supreme, the shoe features a full grain leather upper, which is just standard when you get in JD Sports, I'm assuming. Co branded footbread and lace lock. Okay, lace lock has got co branding on it as well. And a deep boss print logo on the heel. The Air One Low will be offered in two colorways available. The Air Force One will be restocked regularly throughout. So in the UK, it's 95. EU is 110 euros. And in the US, it's 96 dollars. So really amazing entry point into supreme under 100 bucks you can get yourself a pair of air force ones with the supreme logo on the side and i'm pretty sure for people who are you know i'm pretty sure the kids out there who are going to be making sure people are going to see their tag at the back of the hill but i just think it's nice to have just like imagine you buy two pairs of each and have them in your wardrobe because air force ones especially the white pair are probably a bit more versatile than maybe the black pair because some people aren't really a fan of wearing all black shoes which i love i'm a big fan of all black shoes if anyone that knows me will know i have tons of all black shoes you know from fucking um Stuff like that, from tassel loafers to runners. I love a good all black shoe. Um, but I guess all white pair, just stick a couple um, on ice, wear one for your day to day. And you've got a really kind of, you know, you've got you've got like a, a basic shoe that you can get from JD Sports with a little bit of a added touch to it, a little bit added spice added to it with a Supreme branding on the side. And again, I think it's really one of their better collaborations we've done so far. And something that I hope we might see coming up later in the future. Who knows? They might decide to make a mid. They might decide to make a high. But I think introducing the Air Force One low, reintroducing it again to kids and telling them, hey, this is a shoe that you should really care about is the one. Because I think, especially sneakerhead kids, they have a tendency to always be jumping from uh, the newer thing to newer thing. They're not necessarily that tied to like classic silhouettes. Maybe the only one they're really tied to model-wise is the Jordan 1, right? Which is a bit of a safe option because all their favorite artists wear them. But sometimes going back to the archive, I think, you know what? Actually, I really like the Air Force One Low. It's one of the classic shoes that works really well. Most outfits, looks good on shorts, looks good with sweats, jeans, whatever. Um, I've never seen... It's impossible, basically, to make Air Force One look bad unless you, like, choke them to death. And even then, I see people pull them off really well. So, a uh, really clever shoe, really cleverly done. And again, um, big up Supreme for just continually smashing it, really, isn't it? No surprise there, really, in that regard. 